So all of our contacts for pushing the bushings out are away or don't have a press and that sort of stuff. So we're just gonna do what we did last time and burn them out. So we've bought ourselves a butane torch. Uh, we'll melt the outside of the bushing and then hammer them out. We gotta spend a lot of time like getting it really hot so that the rubber around the outside becomes like molten and then we can smack them out. It should be fairly easy because we've done it before, but we'll see. So this is just a fairly cheap butane kit that we got from Bunnings. Um, like I think it was like 40-ish bucks and it comes with gas. And then the refills, we got two refills um, for 11 bucks each. So we should have more than enough gas and we'll just take it back if we don't use it. Um, it'll take a while because last time we used map gas and it still took a while. And map gas tends to be a bit hotter. Um, but this should do fine, we'll just have to be patient with it. Probably read the instructions, say. Eh? No, go for it. <laughs> I think it's still going. Oh, that's the <laughs> so camera died again, but it took us seven minutes twenty-three. You've really got to heat them up really well to get the bushing hot enough so it slides out. And so there it is. Those two are out. Now I've just got to do the um, trailing arm bushings. As well, it needs to be like part of it. Yeah, dude. It's such a small bush. The whole thing's lit up. Oh, I'll get out right on fire. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Dunsky. So just did the diff bushing, the exact same as the front uh, control arm bushings. Just saw through the outside, push it, saw it again, and then smack it out with a hammer. Nice ADA poly bushing. A little bit of lube on the outside of these. I think that's all it needs. There's some thick lube. Yeah, it's glunky. Yeah. And then we can just like 
There oh. we go. That's perfect. Lovely. We're a family channel. We're a family friendly channel, family Dave. Action. I would. Oh, God. They stink. They stink. Look nice. Um, pretty sure they're that way up. But we might double check. It's on top. So that will go through there. That sits perfectly in there. And then, yeah. Like Lego. It's like, like Lego. It's like grown up Lego. All you gotta do with these is line them up with those notches. See like the notches inside there? I think there's one there, and then there's one on the other side. You can see it on the outside there. So you just line them up. Something like that. And the other side. Where are all the problems? <laughs> this is literally too easy. I reckon that'd be cool. There we go. Oh, what the Back. On. In. Yes. See why it's tight now? Why? Somehow this has got like crash damage on the diff housing. Not the. Wow, well, it's better than crash now. Come have a look. Okay, look at that side. And then look at that side. That's probably just us dropping it. <laughs> no, surely not. It's look got that. rust. That's why that won't go in. You have to bang it out. Here it is. Here's the problem that's going to not allow it to get back in. Um, so we've just found that there's actually some damage on Bailey's subframe. So if you look here, it looks like someone's like dragged it into something because this is bent compared to this side. So we're just going to hit it out with a hammer. Um, if it affects the alignment too much, we might try and source one from like a wrecked car or something like that. But if it drives fine and lines up fine, because um, this just isn't lining up with the diff hole at the moment. But if it does and it's okay, then we'll just run it. Won't matter too much. So we ran into a little bit of a problem with the uh, subframe. Other than the crash damage on the diff, like where the diff mounts, which we were just going to widen the hole and attach it so it was straight and it wouldn't really matter too much. Um, it actually has crash damage on the rear trailing arm mounts as well. So they look like... So what I'm talking about are these here, these little brackets. And so what we found is if you look at this one, you've actually got some rust here where it's obviously cracked the coating that's on the outside and it's actually very bent, that bracket. So we can't actually get the trailing arms into these because it doesn't line up. This one's actually bent as well, which I'm guessing is because that one's been hit and that's bent that because the trailing arm is still in one piece and actually lines up really well. So if you look at that and you look at that, much more straighter. So I think it's been driven into like a, a log or a stick or a stump or something like that in a field by the looks of things. There's a lot of grass under the car. So I think this has had a hard life and it's been pulled into something. We found another subframe. Uh, we're gonna go pick that up at some stage. And that one looks in perfect condition. We'll double check it before we leave. And then yeah, we'll just have to burn the bushings out of that one. Uh, and replace that, that should make it really, really simple. Like it should be a hour job to burn those out, get the bushings in, and then mount the trailing arms onto them. Little hiccup, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. We found a subframe for 50 bucks, so it's another small cost to add to it. As I said, should be a quick and easy fix. We should be able to get everything done pretty quickly. 
we may be under a little bit of pressure because this car does have to go back on the road. Bailey's actually selling his other car and getting in this as like his daily sort of thing. So we do need to get this going, get it fixed, get it running. Little hiccup, that happens with 20 year old cars. So uh, that's the end of this video. Like, subscribe, uh, we'll see you in the next one.